many folks uh, have said that it is going to be one of the biggest uh, Academy Award winning movies uh, in quite some time. Uh, in in uh, January at Sundance, Fox Searchlight paid $17.5 million for the film, the highest amount ever paid at a film at Sundance. It has gotten incredible buzz since then, but now the focus though is on the director, Nate Parker himself, and what took place when he was in college in 1999. In 1999, him and his roommate, Gene Celestine, both uh, who were wrestlers at Penn State, Celestine, who co-wrote Birth of a Nation, they were accused of raping a then 18-year-old student while she was drunk. Now, they went through a trial. Parker was acquitted. Celestine was convicted. The case was then overturned. It was reversed on appeal. Then there was a second case. According to various reports, prosecutors could not find some of the witnesses who testified in the first case, so therefore they chose not to move forward with the retrial. In 2012, the young woman who accused the two of rape committed suicide at the age of 30. All of this has now come to light and has cast a shadow on the movie and has caused many to say that Parker should not be supported uh, in this film and that, uh, in fact, more attention should be paid to the issue of the particular trial. Now, uh, Nate Parker released a statement. He's done a couple of interviews talking about this, but he also released a statement and he did this on Facebook. And this is what he wrote. These are my words written from my heart and not filtered through a third party gaze. Please read these separate from any platform I may have, but from me as a fellow human being, I write to you all devastated. Over the last several days, a part of my past, my arrest, trial, and acquittal on charges of sexual assault has become a focal point for media coverage, social media speculation, and industry conversation. I understand why so many are concerned and rightfully have questions. These issues of a woman's right to be safe and of men and women engaging in healthy relationships are extremely important to talk about however difficult. And more personally, as a father, a husband, a brother, and man of deep faith, I understand how much confusion and pain this incident has had on so many, most importantly, the young woman who was involved. I myself just learned that the young woman ended her own life several years ago, and I am filled with profound sorrow. I can't tell you how hard it is to hear this news. I can't help but think of all the implications this has for her family. I cannot, nor do I want to ignore the pain she endured during and following our trial. While I maintain my innocence that the encounter was unambiguously consensual, there are, the, there, there are things more important than the law. There is morality. No one who calls himself a man of faith should even be in that situation. As a 36-year-old father of daughters and person of faith, I look back on that time as a teenager and can say without hesitation that I should have used more wisdom. I look back on that time, my indignant attitude, and my heartfelt mission to prove my innocence with eyes that are more wise with time. I see now that I may not have shown enough empathy even as I fought to clear my name. Empathy for the young woman and empathy for the seriousness of the situation I put myself and others in. I cannot change what has happened. I cannot bring this young woman who was someone else's daughter, someone's sister, and someone's mother back to life. I have changed so much since 19. I've grown and matured in so many ways and still have more learning and growth to do. I have tried to conduct myself in a way that honors my entire community and will continue to do this to the best of my ability. All of this said, I also know there are wounds that neither time nor words can heal. I, can ne I have never run from this period of my life and I never ever will. Please don't take this as an attempt to solve this with a statement. I urge you only to accept this letter as my response to the moment. Joining me now, Dr. Cleo Monago, behavioral health expert, CEO of the Black Men's Exchange. So on our panel, Dr. Avis Jones DeWeaver, Gianna Caldwell, Angela Peoples as well. Um, it's interesting, I saw a story in The Wrap where uh, a, um, a, a sexual assault um, uh, counselor said that, because the plan was for Nate Parker and others in the movie to travel the country, going to churches and doing and college campuses, talking about Nat Turner, talking about this slave revolt. She says that if they do a college tour, it should now be about sexual assault and slavery. That's horrible. Your thoughts? It's, well, well, I don't know. I would say it's possible, but, but first of all, I think it's important that we sort of clear up some, some factual things that I think need to be laid out on the table in terms of what actually happened. In addition, one, one of my most shocking 
f discoveries around this issue was at the time that this happened, not only was, you know, did that incident occur afterwards, apparently there was harassment by both him and his roommate against this young woman, after. which caused her, after this, which caused her to try to commit suicide twice while she was still in college and ultimately left to her, led to her dropping out of college. Uh, in terms of the retrial, one of the main reasons why it didn't come up was because she refused to go back and testify, and we know how difficult it is for rape victims to testify at trial. But again, though, uh, and, but, and, but, and, but, and but, one, but, one other thing, but, one but, other but, thing, but, one but, other but, thing, but, I have but, to get this Amos, out. Amos, I have to Amos, get this but, out. Amos, you can get it out, but before you go there, I've read the account where, where one said she didn't want to testify, but prosecutors also said they were unable to have other witnesses testify, so it wasn't just her not testifying. Okay, and in addition now, to as, that. As a factual point. All right, and in addition to that, one of the things that, I'm glad that you read his Facebook statement, but one of the things that offended me, frank, quite, frank, quite frankly, tremendously, was that his first statement on this issue uh, that was relayed in the Vanity Fair article exclusively focused on him. Mm -hmm. You know, I went through a painful period in my life, and it's, it was 17 years ago. And it was no attention whatsoever brought to this young woman who was largely devastated by this specific incident. You know, personally, I, am, I was shocked, I was hurt, I was devastated and disappointed because I think this piece of art needs to be out there. Mm -hmm. I think that the world needs to know about Nat Turner and needs to know about this rebellion and I was greatly looking forward to this movie. And I'm not at the point now where I can say I don't think it, people need to support it per se because I think the world needs to know that history. I think that we need to be enlightened in that way. But I also think that we need to understand and have real discussions in this, um, in this country about rape culture and what that means and have real discussions with our sons about consent and what that does and doesn't mean. And when people have violated a woman, they have to understand it's not all about them. Mm -hmm. It's about the woman that was violated, a life that was destroyed, and how do you move forward without at a, least acknowledging but, but the pain that was brought on this woman, which her family said gotcha. that she never recovered so from. So here's a question that I've seen raised, and I raised when I asked you, Cleo, because it's very interesting. He goes through a trial. He's found innocent. Others say, well, yeah, but he's actually guilty. That took place 17 years ago. So how do we then judge that today? Well, I, I agree with what, with what you said in terms of his initial response to the rape incident and how it was very self-serving and inconsiderate of the, the horrible violation that he apparently was a, was a part of. But what's important to me in some of these sentiments... Oh, 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 This is why it's important for us to do this. He was accused of rape. Right. Found not guilty. Right. Largely no, 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 no. I, 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 okay. I have to explain yeah. that. I, 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 okay, also, okay, allow me to finish. Okay. Allow me, allow to, me to finish. <laughs> yes. He was... It was a rape allegation. He says it was consensual. She said it was not consensual. The jury made their decision. In the various reports, folks have said that it was because they had a prior relationship or a prior sexual, uh, uh, a sexual relationship that that was the reason why. Those are the facts. So that's why, again though, so it, because if we, may, if we are saying that was a rape, but the jury said not guilty, that's factually incorrect for us to do that. So, so we have- how are we, how are we also then allowing the same justice system that we indict over and over and over again for acquitting officers, for acquitting Darren Wilson, for right. acquitting George Zimmerman, to then be the arbiter of whether or and not that, it's okay. an issue that needs to be and that was my second, in our And that was my second- And where it needs okay, to be accountability. Okay, and that was my second question after Cleo answered, because that has to be talked about. So hold on, Cleo, make your point. Boy, okay, anyway. No, no, what, I'm uh, <laughs> saying, what I'm saying is, no, 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 but it's important for us to lay all the facts Absolutely. out there and not the assumptions, Absolutely. so I want us to walk through this properly. Go but ahead. But my initial response was about what he said and how he responded and how inconsiderate his initial response was regarding the violation of rape and what this woman apparently went through regardless of what the court system finally did. So I want to acknowledge that that's unfortunate. But what I want to also say is that people need to know the story of Nat Turner. Um, we do not know the story of Nat Turner in this country. We know about Martin Luther King, Malcolm X, et cetera. We, we, we rarely hear about a black freedom fighter. Right. And a film was made, like I said to others, Nate was paid 
He got almost $20 million, for, uh, and he's, he, so we will not be not supporting his pocket by not going to see the film. It's now in Ru Rupert Mur Mur Murdoch's camp. He owns the film. He's going to make bank or not on what happens with the film. We cannot boycott Nate. Nate is paid. He's at home chilling. So what's important is that people know who Nat Turner was. It's unfortunately and strange, and I was I was wondering when I first heard about this whole Fox Nate um, that um, the, the the person this movie is about. I was like, how did that how did that happen? How did Murdoch and Nate Parker and well, I mean, com I mean companies acquire films. I mean, Fox Searchlight has put out other movies as well. So. They, well, they, think it's they, they, they put out other movies, but it's, it's still strange because they they, all they've put out is buffoon stuff. So let's, let's be clear. Fox has never put out some powerful film that's helping, helpful to black people ever. Living Color, we keep hearing about. Living Color was a comedy. We always see each other in comedy context. And that's important. Entertainment is important. But empowering black people and showing a black freedom fighter is a whole other thing. So I was wondering how... Well, it's Hollywood. Bottom line is, I mean, Hollywood, just, just like uh, you have 12 Years a Slave, I mean, a movie company acquired that as well, hold on one second, because we come back. I, I want to deal with that question, which I was going to get to, and that is, because it's also being talked about, in the context of how do African Americans look at this case and say he's found not guilty, but then in other cases where we disagree with the verdict, we then say that is wrong. We'll deal with that. We come back next. Welcome back. We're talking about uh, birth, the birth of a nation, uh, the movie about Nat Turner and his director, Nate Parker, uh, and uh, this the issue surrounding uh, him uh, being accused of rape 17 years ago, and it now uh, resurfacing as well. As I went to the break and I talked about that. I was on social media the other night, and I was having this conversation, and that is a dilemma many folks are facing. Mm -hmm. That. In the case of I mean, whether or not we're talking about Nate Parker, whether we're talking about OJ, mm -hmm. whether we're talking about cases where African Americans will say, I, I agree with this person or I'm backing this person, and then if they're found not guilty, not guilty. But then in cases where we disagree and someone is found not guilty, we say, but they were guilty. Right. Yeah, I mean, I think that the, the truth is that our justice system is flawed, right? And but but the issue here is for me is less about ju is less about justice, is less about you know sort of uh, uh, the, the 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 facts of, of whether or not there was an acquittal or there was a retry or anything like that. For me, there is a, a larger issue when we talk about rape, ra the rape culture in our country, and particularly in the black community. There's such a tendency to sweep this under the rug, and so particularly I think when we find that the victims are women especially black women um, or, or women of color, then it's easier for us to say, well, let the law plan out. Let's let the process. We hear this all the time with Bill Cosby, right? Well, like, we, we haven't seen any evidence. Like, let, let's, the pro let's let the process, uh, uh, you know, carry its way and see where things land. Um, but this is particularly true when the victims are women. There's such a push particularly to allow for the, 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 the sanctity, right, of, of the black man to rise to the top and not actually center what is true of, 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 of the violence of rape and sexual assault in our culture. I think that there was a huge opportunity and, 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 and um, I think you addressed it earlier for, for Nate Parker to actually have a conversation about sexual assault on college campuses and what it actually means to talk about consent versus, um, uh, you know, like, oh, she was drunk or anything but, like that. But, but, but Gianna, I ask you, should he do that while promoting a film about the story of Nat Turner that a ton of Americans have no idea about. I say absolutely not. I do agree that it's meaningful for this movie to be developed, well, it's being developed. I think it should be out there. And as you said, Roland, he was proven not guilty in the court of law. And I think that's very important for us to keep in mind that his life but the and the life of But the court of law doesn't actually say anything about the experiences of this woman and, and you know what? millions I think, I think of this other is, women this, this is a and fair also point. millions of other men like Avis, like, like Avis Parker. mentioned something that I hadn't heard. You said that this young lady was harassed. Yes. I didn't see the Vanity Fear article. Actually, no. It was two interviews you did, Variety and Deadline. Okay, That's I didn't see any of those. But since then, it seems as though he has come to his senses and he mentioned something that is very important, empathy. Empathy for this young lady who obviously had a tragic event, although he believes himself to be innocent and the court of law actually agrees with him. Right? Act, but the court of law actually and agrees with him. So why are we relitigating a case that he was already proven innocent of? But again, it's for, again, we're also talking, I'm not talking about relitigating whether or not Nick 
Parker was uh, is was guilty or was convicted under the law. I'm talking about litigating this issue, taking this as an opportunity because, frankly, uh, sexual assault it, it is a part of Black history. It truly is. Sexual assault. It, sexual assault is American history. Let's not separate Black folks from everybody else. Let's be very honest. Sexual assault is the reason I'm the color I am. Let's just be very clear about that. There, there are no interracial marriages in my background. Let's be very clear about that. And in fact, I've seen The Birth of a Nation, and two of the most powerful scenes in the movie deal with the issue of rape. Clear. It wouldn't be difficult to talk about s sexual assault and slavery because, as you just said, Absolutely. they kind of they kind of go together. Absolutely. But I think we're falling for something here. Here I go with the conspiracy things that you get in my case about Rolling. <laughs> okay. I, 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 I think, I, I, here comes super black. <laughs> no, this comes super fat. Okay, go ahead. First of all, it's really peculiar that on the heels of the release of this particular type of film, all this drama is going on. If you pull back the curtains on a lot of people in Hollywood who are making films, including people like Woody Allen, who married and raped his own daughter, stepdaughter, and Roman Polanski, raper, you'll find all kinds of stuff. Yeah, first of all, factually, Roman Polanski, uh, pled guilty to rape and fled the country exactly. and has been a, has, well, my point is that he's still held in glory there. that's my right. point is that so he's still my point is that Polanski that, is still held in glory that's a great filmmaker and it's not a whole lot of talk about what he actually did so I want to make sure I'm real clear in terms of my point but the point I want to make here is that Hollywood in terms of the human beings that make the films are full of flawed people Absolutely. so the point I want us to get here is that we got to see this film about Nat Turner and do not l allow this interesting dilemma that has come up right before the film's release to get in the way of the importance of knowing this man's life and who he I was in this country. Okay, so, 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 go ahead. Go. We're talking about no, this on the that's, not the that, point. that's exactly not what we're doing. Even yeah, yeah, having this it's conversation, a no. we're saying that this guy is still guilty so in, the, in the court of public we opinion. Not talk about oh, we need to, let's talk minute. about so this. We should fact. not talk about the fact that that police officers kill uh, kill black folks on a day to day and don't the, get for the, get acquitted for all the time. This is a distraction. Okay, okay, talk over each other. If we know that, wait a minute. If we know that the system is rigged, then why are we basing our our conversations about how we treat each other about how we engage with each other about accountability for each other and to each other based on the system that we know is Gianna respond. Hold up, Gianna respond, then Ava, then Cleo. So I would say we know that the criminal justice system oftentimes has marginalized African Americans, disenfranchised African Americans to a great degree. Mm -hmm. This it's individual you, you is a black, against, is against black men, right? You just said, no, this you individual, just said the system is flawed. Absolutely, yeah, there, it, it has, been, it has okay, a history so of being flawed that, and marginalizing black people. Why is that but if the I, if arbiter? If why I, is that if, if guilty or not guilty, the decision? If I may finish. Please finish. And some cases, mm -hmm. we get a good verdict. One based on facts. Oh, wow. So you're two. deciding You're deciding that, well, this was the verdict. one case where there was a good <laughs> verdict, <laughs> so we don't have to talk about it anymore? Okay. Hey, no, I'm saying I, I, that. I come on. Separate, First of okay. all, let, let's talk about these things in a broader context. Okay, the reality is nearly two-thirds of black women have been a victim of sexual assault at some point in her life. As a black community, we have to deal with that. Gabrielle, we you have one to second, deal one with second, one, show. one second, to Ava's finished. Brushing that under the rug and telling black women that you have to somehow push down the fact that you're a woman to prove that you are good enough to be considered black. Now, here, here is the reality. We have to make sure that I think that as this thing goes to college campuses, Frankly, I don't think you need to conflate the two, mm -hmm. but much like how the NFL did investments around around domestic violence after they had what happened there last year, I think there needs to be some investments by around b by Fox Searchlight, whoever bought this movie and decided to support this, probably knowing that this was in the background, or did. either Nate Parker himself yes, he needs, invest. to invest, yeah, need to invest, need to invest in the community Absolutely. around educating people around sexual assault and do that as a separate and ongoing event that occurs across the country in addition to promoting Clay it. I think the idea of Nate Parker doing a sexual assault tour is ridiculous. He's not an expert just because he was... He doesn't, he can... He's, 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 he's not an expert British because he was, in, he was in court and, and found not guilty for a, an apparent sexual assault. And also, I'm, it's, I'm frustrated with this idea of that only black women uh, get raped, black people get raped. 
and black men get raped. And because of patriarchy, the embarrassment and humiliation about man, male being raped, we don't hear about it. And it's put it under the rug much more than women get raped. Matter of fact, there's some studies that say that men get raped as much as women. So who, who, who are you going to listen to? The bottom line is that that's another issue that has not been brought to the point. So let's not act like only one group gets raped. Rape is horrible no matter who it occurs to. But let's separate these things. Like I said earlier, Nate has been paid. He's he, he's out of this picture now in terms of this film. Let's go see. No, no, no. He's, he's actually not out of the picture. Yeah. He's very much involved in terms of well, I know that. promotion. I'm talking about in terms of I'm talking about supporting this film. Right. So, so right. So, supporting so, so, him. So, so, here, so here's a question I'm going to raise. I'm going around to each right. one of you. Hold on. Okay. Literally, I got 60 seconds. <laughs> I'm going around because I've already. Uh, so here's the deal. I'm not going to do what the hell today live. I'm going to tape it and I'm going to air that. Uh, but I'm do I, having the segment dealing with uh, our neighborhoods uh, and uh, uh, technology coming up next. So the question I'm going to pose to each one of you, and I'll start with you, Avis, and I've seen this discussion on social media. I've seen some writers say, I will not watch this movie. I will not support it. I will not endorse it. I will not tweet it. Should black America do that? Should they say, because of this case 17 years ago, we should not support the birth of a nation? Yes or no? I'm going to make the personal decision that I will watch this movie because I believe that this story needs to be out there, but I can understand if someone decides not to do it. Gianno. Very, very quickly. Uh, Gianno, I think should, answer my question. People, people should absolutely go and see it. No question about it. Got it. That's all I need to know. <laughs> Angela. I think I, I will go see the movie, a movie at some point, and I think that folks should make the decision on their own. Cleo. As I've said repetitively, we need to know the story of, Nat, of, of Reverend Nat Turner. Because it's not a story that we hear that much about a, a black freedom fighters. It's never been a film, particularly that has this level of support and exposure about a black freedom fighter that actually lived and fought on our behalf in this country. All right. I'm sure there will be other conversations. We certainly appreciate it. Thanks a bunch. Kickstart your day at 7 and get the news you need from the perspective you want. News One Now with Roland Martin. Every weekday morning at 7 on TV One.